Uh, hi everyone. In the last lecture, we talked about the ISLM model and we explained how to derive the ISLM model. I will first give a recap of what we covered and then we will talk a little bit more about policy analysis using the ISLM model, a topic which we already covered in the previous lecture, but we will give some more detail about what could shift the IS uh, curve to the right and what could shift the IS curve to the left and we'll do the same thing for the LM and we'll explain how to show um, the effect of a given um, monetary or physical policy uh, on output and the interest rate. As you may remember, the IS and LM curves meet each other to determine the combination, the interest rate and output combination that clears both markets, the goods market and financial markets simultaneously. We know that the IS um, refer to the equilibrium in the goods market and it is a downward sloping uh, curve. We know that the LM uh, refer to the equilibrium in the uh, money market and traditionally it uh, used to be drawn as upward sloping curve and we explained uh, w in which case we could uh, draw the LM curve as a horizontal line. Um, but for now let's just think of it as an upward sloping curve but then we will we'll move to um, the case where actually uh, it is a horizontal line. Uh, these are things we covered already uh, in the previous uh, lecture. We explained what citrus paradox mean, means other things being the same. And if we um, assume there was an expansionary physical policy, that means a rise in net government spending, G minus T, and that would shift the IS curve to the right. If we assume physical policy was contractionary, and um, that implies a fall in net government spending, again, G minus T, and that would shift the IS curve to the left. We already discussed that in the previous lecture. Um, on the other side, if we have an expansionary monetary policy, that means um, a rise in real money supply, which would shift the LM curve to the right. And if we have a contractionary monetary policy, then we would have, um, it implies a fall in real money supply and that would shift the LM curve to the left. So these are things we already covered in um, the previous lecture. And we talked about the idea that IS is basically, um, all points on IS are equilibrium points in the goods market where investment equal um, savings or production equal income. So these are things we already covered, but I wanted to give a very quick recap uh, on these topics. Uh, one more thing we uh, I want to recap or want to cover in this recap is uh, we already know that the IS is a downward sloping curve. Um, and that means um, equilibrium in goods market implies an increase in and uh, interest rate will lead to a decrease in output. So that, that's like an inverse relationship, okay? Um, but we also could think about, um, which we already covered, things that um, shift the IS curve to the right or to the left. I think the way I put it in the previous lecture was that anything that would shift the aggregate demand upward, that would shift the IS curve to the right, and anything that would shift aggregate demand downward or suppress aggregate demand, that will shift the IS curve to the, the left. Um, in terms of um, the slope of the IS curve or the steepness, how steep uh, the IS curve uh, should look like, it depends on how sensitive investment to changes in the interest rate. So if we have uh, this relationship is very sensitive or if investment is very sensitive to changes 
to um, the interest rate. So let's say a small change in the interest rate will bring um, huge or much larger scale changes in investment that would imply a flatter uh, IS curve. Um, again, moving to the other side, which is the money market, we already drive the LM curve and we explain that all points on the LM curve, um, they basically uh, denote equilibrium in the money market where again, uh, money supply meets um, demand for money. And we, we explain where the LM um, come from. It come from liquidity preference um, equal money supply, which is basically exactly the same thing that I said a, a second ago, which is basically uh, money demand equal money supply, which is the equilibrium condition in the money market. So um, when we talk about uh, the LM um, curve position and slope, um, we already know that um, the uh, slope of the LM curve depends on income elasticity and interest elasticity of money demand or demand for money. So um, this is something, again, just we try to, to recap some of the important points that to do with the, um, the LM uh, curve. Um, larger income elasticity means steeper LM curve. Um, or lower in interest elasticity would mean steeper LM curve. Um, if um, it is insensitive in in uh, to uh, I at all, if LM, that means um, LM should be like a vertical line or nearly vertical line. Um, if money demand um, very sensitive to the interest rate, then we should um, draw it like close to horizontal line. But what we actually mentioned last time, we didn't actually focus at, on this point because what we mentioned rather would actually what central banks in practice do. So we said in, in modern central banks, they choose the interest rate and then adjust money supply to achieve that level of interest rate. And that is the reason why we uh, draw the LM curve as a horizontal line because we treat I as given, it's given by the central bank and basically central bank decide on the interest rate and then adjust money supply to achieve that and we explain how they would adjust money supply basically by going to the um, open market operation or to the, the bond market to buy or sell depending on um, the their goals. So this is this is mainly why we um, we plot the LM curve as a horizontal line. So <clears throat> equilibrium equilibrium obviously um, if we take the view that LM curve should be a horizontal line, given that central banks decide or usually now decide on um, the interest rate, and then adjust. Uh, money supply accordingly so that basically imply that we should consider drawing the LM curve as a horizontal line and as you can see here I bar basically referring to the um, the idea that we actually treating I here as given by the central bank so it's not actually determined within that model is basically is just given by the central bank or this is what the central bank decide on and then they um, uh, try to change money supply to achieve that level of interest rate. Um, in any case, the equilibrium point would be the intersection point between the IS curve and the LM curve. And that will, uh, is point A here on this graph, which show um, the associated interest rate level and output uh, level. And that point A here is very interesting because this point, as we said, well, all points on IS represent equilibrium goods market. All points on the LM represent equilibrium in, in financial markets. So basically the intersection point A, which lies on both curves at the same time, basically it gives us equilibrium or simultaneous equilibrium in both markets. Okay. <clears throat> How we use this uh, 
model, LM or ISLM model for policy analysis, we already covered that. Uh, just as a reminder, we're still in the short run. And in the short run, we uh, already um, know that output level is determined mainly by the um, aggregate demand uh, level. And therefore, these policies we implement to affect the aggregate demand, they are called short run or they are called demand side policy. So why? Because basically they affect the or they work through their effect on the aggregate demand uh, curve. So assuming a policy scenario, let's say we are um, going to use a physical policy, uh, how the I or the interest rate output pair will change as physical policy changes. So we know how what, what it means to uh, change physical policy. Um, basically, we're looking at uh, changes in uh, government spending and taxes or both. Um, and we see how that would affect the interest rate and the output. Um, so assuming that there's nothing else changed, so it's only um, that change in uh, government spending or G minus T. Uh, so that's why we, we, we consider the citrus paribus condition where we assume that everything else was constant. So it's only one change in fiscal policy. So uh, basically, as we said before, then you need to think about how that change will affect uh, or in which direction it will shift the IS curve, okay, by like, as a result of changing uh, fiscal policy. So um, let's not worry about the LM curve at this point because basically it depends on the monetary policy or what's happening in the money market. So we said that before, physical policy shift um, uh, or, or any change in the fiscal policy, basically that uh, change the uh, goods market conditions. And that through the effect on aggregate demand. So again, I just want to highlight that again. I want to emphasize that the idea here is that these are demand side policies. That is why, because first we are on the short run. Uh, second, these policies work uh, or affect output through their effect on uh, or their impact on uh, the aggregate demand. And that happened in the short run. Um, so what would happen then? Um, let's assume a scenario now in the goods market where we have initial rise in G minus T. And obviously, let's say there's more government spending. So we explain that story of the multiplier. What would happen? Uh, income increase and those who receive income, again, they increase their consumption. And um, those who receive the, uh, this consumption expenditure, it's for them income, and then that cycle uh, goes on. So we know that, that now an initial rise in G minus T will increase income, that will increase uh, consumption, and that will increase income again. So we'll have another round of income change and consumption and, and so on. So until that effect dies out, uh, ultimately, and we explained uh, how that worked through the um, effect of the multiplier. At that point, output catches up with demand and income is brought up to a new equilibrium level. And again, this is as a result of a one-off change in uh, physical policy or government um, uh, government spending or G minus T, basically. Okay, so what would happen in the money market? We also know that the rise of income would require higher transaction or money uh, or demand for transaction. Okay, that is the, comp remember, we said um, demand for money depends on transaction, depends on uh, uh uh, speculation, a speculative demand, and also uh, uh, we have the precautionary demand. So, but we said that the first component or the first factor that determine um, demand for money is transaction level, and we proxy for that by uh, looking at income level. So having a higher, and, and they are positively correlated. So a higher income uh, would require higher transaction or money 
uh, uh, increased money uh, demand. And given P, we didn't uh, assume that in the short run, we didn't say that, okay, we, or we treat P as not, not changing or price level not changing. And given that money supply, again, is fixed, that's determined by the um, the central uh, bank, then um, this must cause uh, the interest rate to rise. So let's just see what's happened here now. So to interest the interest rate and the output level. So a one of increase in government spending or G minus T would increase uh, income or output, uh, equilibrium output, and also would increase uh, the interest rate. So, uh, however, if we treat uh, the interest rate as a variable that, or the policy variable for uh, central banks, we said that means we will uh, have to draw the uh, LM curve horizontal line. And in that case, if there is a, uh, an increase in um, government spending, then um, the IS will shift to the right. But the case I'm showing now on the screen is actually is the opposite. So the effect of an increase in taxes, which is actually opposite to uh, this case I was explaining here without the graph. So in this case, obviously, the IS curve will shift to the right. But in this case, this is the opposite case where you have an increase in taxes, which would shift the IS curve to the left. And of course, the effect here on output, again, um, output drop and remember i didn't change for one for one only one reason or the main reason here is that we said well the there will be a change in money market uh, uh or, or the central bank will adjust money supply in order to maintain that level of the interest rate and that is the reason why uh in this case we actually uh draw the uh, lm curve as a horizontal line I hope that's clear. So the idea here, just I want, I don't want uh, uh, people to be confused between this slide and this slide, because in this slide, I'm talking here about an increase in uh, government uh, uh, spending or G minus T. That's what I was explaining, even though on the slide, you'll see the opposite case as well. So between brackets, you'll, I'm talking about the opposite case where you actually have a fall in government spending, which means um, the IS curve would, would shift to, to the left if government spending fall, but if government government spending uh, increase, that means IS would shift to the right. In this case here, I'm actually going to talk about taxes. So and uh, instead of just analyzing the effect through like, you know, using words, I actually show that on the graph. So in this graph, basically what we have here, we have IS curve uh, shifting to the left again as a result of an increase in taxes and just remember uh, the rule of thumb here <laughs> remember what you said anything that increases or that would increase aggregate demand or shift aggregate demand curve upward okay that will shift is to the right and anything would shift aggregate demand downward then that would uh, shift the IS curve to the left. And that's exactly what happened in this slide. So, or in this graph, you'll see um, an increase in, in taxes, obviously, um, that would lead to shift the IS curve to, uh, to the left. And that means we move from point A to point A prime. And the uh, equilibrium output here would change from Y to Y prime, which is below the initial equilibrium uh, point. And again, the reason for I not changing here is just because the way we uh, draw the LM curve, which in this case, we draw a horizontal line. And the reason for that, as we explained, that modern central banks usually decide on the interest rate and adjust money supply to achieve that. And that's why it makes sense to, uh, or in this case, obviously, um, it makes sense to um, plot the LM curve as a horizontal line. If this wasn't the case, if the policy variable wasn't uh, basically uh, interest rate, uh, and if it was money supply, then we could think of uh, an upward sloping LM curve. But as we said, because most central banks today 
what that's what they do they decide on the interest rate and then adjust money supply accordingly to achieve that level of interest rate that's why we plot the interest rate as a horizontal line moving to the um, second policy scenario when we have um, so we discussed now how we could show that um, a change to um, fiscal policy uh, on uh, I and, 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 and Y or the interest rate or uh, output level. Um, now we move to monetary policy. Again, um, now if we assume that, okay, citrus paribus condition, only there is a change in um, monetary policy or let's say, well, the essence here basically is to adjust money supply, is to change money supply. And changing money supply basically uh, you increase money supply if you uh, follow or if you want over the central bank want to apply an expansionary policy and you uh, decrease money supply if the central bank want to uh, follow a contractionally um, physical, uh, uh, sorry, monetary policy, not fiscal policy. Um, okay, so again, the same way we think about this is the same way what, exactly what we did with the uh, phys with fiscal policy, we say we're not going to worry too much now about what had happened um, uh, to the LM curve. We were focusing mainly about the changes that would uh, a fiscal policy change bring to uh, the IS. Here we do the same, exactly the same. So given that monetary policy is to do with money market, then um, any change in, um, in this condition or in, in monetary conditions, uh, then uh, we're not going to worry too much about the IS curve. Um, since there's no change to physical policy and then uh, money policy shift uh, would shift first uh, or would change the uh, money market condition. So in the money market, in the money market, if there's a rise in money supply, so that's an expansionary uh, physical policy that would lower the interest rate. However, if there is a a fall in uh, money supply that's a contractionally monetary policy that would raise the interest rate. So how would this affect the, um, or how would that work in the goods market? Okay, so going back to the idea here, so let's just go with the first scenario where we just assume there's an expansionary monetary policy and that means uh, uh, money supply has increased. Money supply has increased in the money market that will increase interest rate. And in the goods market, um, oh, sorry, so um, expansionary mon monetary policy that will increase money supply, which will lower the interest rate. And the lower interest rate uh, in uh, how that work in the, in the goods market, we know that the uh, investment is correlated or is actually or depend on the interest rate. So the a lower interest rate or the lower interest rate that will raise investment and of course that will increase income because again we know that investment is one of the components of the aggregate demand. It's actually one of the very important components in the aggregate demand function and that is why um, um, it would follow if there's um, uh, if, if investment is uh, sensitive or, or depend on um, interest rate then um, and these are negatively correlated so a lower interest rate would mean a higher level of investment and a higher level of investment obviously would lead to a higher level of income and then we'll go through the same uh, cycle again because that will lead to a higher level of consumption and consumption and that will lead again to another cycle of income and consumption increases and so on until income is brought up uh, in the new uh, uh, equilibrium, to the new equilibrium point. Um, of course, you would think, you know, the opposite way, if or the, the other way, if there is, uh, if there is a contractionary uh, uh, or tight uh, monetary policy. So, uh, in that case, uh, there will be like a fall in money supply that will increase uh, interest rate. And an increase that that would happen in the money market, and then moving to the goods market, then we'd see that higher interest rate means lower investment, and that means again that will affect income, lower income, lower consumption, lower income again, and lower consumption again, and so on until uh, you know un income goes down to a new equilibrium point, which is lower than 
the uh, first or the initial equilibrium point. Uh, to show that on a graph, uh, here we can see um, an expansionary uh, monetary policy, which basically, as we said before, okay, um, what what central banks do, well, they decide if they want to uh, have um, or apply a loose or uh, accommodating monetary policy or expansionary monetary policy, they basically decide on or to change or to lower the interest rate. In this case, or in this graph, you'll see that the interest rate um, dropped from I bar to I by uh, I bar prime. And again, the, the reason we have bar here, just because this is fixed, and it depends on what um, monetary policy or monetary authorities uh, decide for the interest rate. So in our case here, we plot the LM curve as a horizontal curve and an expansion in monetary policy, meaning uh, pushing that curve downward and we move from an equilibrium point A to an equilibrium point A prime, which means a higher level of output, which is Y prime in this case. Now we could actually, we talked about um, physical policy uh, on one hand and monetary policy on, uh, uh, on the other hand. We could actually have a policy mix because both could reinforce each other so they could work uh, uh, together. Uh, basically could have a combination of monetary and physical policy at the same time. So if we assume there was, uh, let's say, suppose there's uh, uh, the economy was going through a recession and output is too low. So the economy is going too, too slow and we want to push that further, we want to stimulate the economy, we want to push it back toward recovery. How would we do that using a policy mix or which... Uh, policy mix would be most appropriate. Basically, uh, both physical and monetary policy can be used to increase output. Um, and that is uh, how that would work. So what we have on the screen now, we have the effect of both a combined physical and monetary expansion. So the physical policy or an expansionary physical policy would mean um, shifting the IS curve to the right. So if you start from point A as an initial equilibrium point and you have the same horizontal LM curve and then the IS curve, then point A with, and, and the associated level here is Y, um, the output level is Y, the equilibrium output level is Y, and um, looking at the effect of an expansionary physical policy that mean uh, physical policy uh, sorry the im um, the is curve shift to the right and at the same time at the same time you'll see that if there is a monetary expansion that will shift the lm curve to or downward so the new lm curve will be lm prime the new is curve will be is prime and the uh, intersection point between these two is a uh, prime which is actually higher than uh, the case for example if you were to increase only physical policy so if you increase physical policy only that would have been the uh, new equilibrium point and or if you um, um, follow an expansion so uh, an expansionary fiscal policy or increasing government spending only that would be would have been the equilibrium point if you um, follow an expansionary monetary policy only that would have been the equilibrium point so in both cases here why would have fallen somewhere here in between but because we use both combination of um, and, and both working in the same direction so uh, if physical expansionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy so that would push the um, uh, output level even farther uh, okay this to this direction to y prime which is uh, much which is higher than uh, using only um, uh, physical expansionary fiscal policy or using only um, uh, uh, expansionary uh, monetary policy. So that's the idea of using an appropriate policy mix depending on the situation and the situation we assumed here basically where we have 
a, a, a deep recession and we want to use both bo policies, uh, physical and monetary policies, to, um, uh, to push the economy back toward uh, recovery. So both work in the same direction and they reinforce each other. And we saw how uh, using this analytical tool, the ISLM uh, model, uh, show us that the effect actually would be much higher than uh, using only one uh, of these uh, two policies. Uh, there's an example here about um, the U.S. recession in 2001. Um, and, and, and as, as you can see in this graph, um, at that point, this is the uh, real GDP growth. And you see it's actually below uh, zero uh, around 2001. So there's a big fall here. And um, that happened between March 2001 and December 2001. Um, and that was triggered by sharp declines in investment uh, demand. So what was the response exactly? So the response uh, or the, 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 the what happened at this point was a recession um, met by strong macroeconomic policy response. The Fed, um, which is the central bank, fed, uh, cut the uh, federal uh, fund rate, which is the interest rate, from 6.5% in January to 2% at the end of 2001. And that obviously re implies an expansionary uh, monetary policy. On the other hand, um, the, um, there was tax cuts, uh, in 2001 and 2002 budget, as you can see from this graph, and um, also increase in government uh, spending. So basically, again, so the policy mix here was an expansionary monetary policy by lowering the uh, federal fund rate and an expansionary fiscal policy by uh, implementing uh, uh, or by cutting taxes and uh, increasing government spending. So it's just a textbook, textbook example of how would you uh, use a policy mix during uh, a recession.